Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot La Mode. And today on Hot La Mode, we are going to be getting into the Golden Globes 2020 red carpet. Now, this is the first red carpet roast and review of the year. So welcome to 2020 in Hot La Mode. Uh, I'm very excited, I'm very pumped. I feel like this is gonna be a grand old year. And before we get any further into the video, if you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, bitchy, analytical way, this is it. So you can go down below, hit the subscribe button and turn on my post notifications. I mean like, what do you have to lose? You're already here. And if you guys wanna see more from me, you can follow me on any of my social media linked down below in the description box. And I also have a podcast out with my friend Darnell Jamal, where weekly we talk about the fashion news and gossip you need to know. But without further ado, let's get into this roast. It's gonna be a long one, so I just wanna get right into it. Like Golden Globes, it's fancy, it's fancy. I'm excited to see what the girls did. I already saw it, but like, you know, I gotta fake it till we make it sort of vibe. First up is Ana de Armas. I don't know if that's how you actually pronounce her name, but I just recently saw her in Knives Out. She was fantastic. I'm obsessed. I thought the movie was great. The thing about this dress is it is a Ralph and Russo. And I feel like since we've never really seen her do a whole press tour sort of moment, I feel like she's gonna go very elegant. She's gonna go very pretty. She has Carla Welsh styling her. You know what? I like this dress. I don't like this dress even just because I like her. I actually do love the little neckline. I like the way that it kind of folds over. I feel like it's really smart because it actually creates space, which allows the waist to actually seem much smaller than it actually is. Like her waist is small, but using that fabric to create that space and that shadow allows the light to sort of make her seem even smaller than she actually is. It's a really smart little technique. I don't know the technical term for it, but I like it. And then the great thing about this dress is there's no sash, there's no belt, there's no ribbon, there's no nothing. It just goes straight into a full skirt. There's no bullshit. There's no Maria Grazia putting whatever. There's no, you know, Prada doing weird seams. Like that is how you make a dress. Like that's it. You don't need to have any visible seam. You don't need to have a belt. Like it just falls straight into this beautiful sequin, dark blue, dark black. You know, beautiful gown. It's a beautiful gown. I think she looks really stunning. I'm excited to see what else she does with the rest of the press tour and award season. Next up is Aquafina. She's wearing Dior. That's why she looks a mess. For some reason, Aquafina can't find a designer, a brand, and anybody to actually like dress her well. And it's kind of, you know, disappointing to say the very least. This skirt jacket with a very ridiculous ruffle neckline and little sort of tool frayed bow or like bow tie. It's just gross. I think that skirt is awful and I don't know why everybody dresses her so dowdily. Like she never wears suits, she never wears like pants. She always is in like a dowdy long skirt or dress. Like it's very covered up. And if that's what she wants to go for, great. But like being covered up and being, you know, more conservatively dressed doesn't mean that you have to look 412. It's just, it's, th those things are not synonymous. So I don't get this ridiculously long, weird, like Mormon skirt. I'm sorry to the Mormons, like Mormons wouldn't even wear that. You know, they have better taste than that. Then you have this jacket. It's so masculine. It's so long, like it's so long. Like literally it's reaching to here on her. Like that's, that's too long, that's too long. You have that bag, Ugh. I'd rather just say Dior, J'adore Dior on it. If it's Dior, like, you know, and I hate the J'adore Dior, but whatever that art deco mumbo jumbo is, is whack. And then this color is so terrible. Like if you're gonna do a Victorian, if you're gonna do Edwardian, if you're gonna do a great color, don't do it in, you know, ridiculous pleated sort of wool. Like it's just so frayed and fried and like, ugh, it, it's like, Honestly, a vocal fry personified. And then you have the little tie or, I don't even, it's, she just looks a mess. She looks a mess, the style is not for her. She needs to find a new stylist because whoever is creating these custom looks and helping her do this and saying, you look good? No, no you don't. Next up is Beanie Feldstein wearing Oscar de la Renta. I do like the, the neckline. I feel like these little, you know, fabric leaves or foliage are really, really great. And the way that it goes to like the tricep, so instead of like a high strap that goes around like the neck, it's more of like 
a tri strap, like a tricep strap. I just invented that and I'm gonna steal it and I don't care what anybody thinks. The thing about this dress to me is I think that the seam that is kind of creating the waist is so obvious that they need to find a different way to do it. Like I love that they're singeing her waist. I love that they're giving her shape. I think it's great, but they need to figure out a way to make it not so obvious. Like it, it's just not cute. It doesn't appeal. And it's really like it draws your eye straight to it. And the whole idea of like creating this effortless waist is sort of, you know, destroyed by having this, you know, weird piece of tubular fabric sort of cutting her and everybody can see it. It's not cute. Lauren Fernando, I know you're so smart. I want you to figure out how to like change this. Cause honestly, if somebody figured out how to like do that, it could be revolutionary. Um, I like the color on her. I love the matching headband. I feel like it's perfect. It's subtle. A lot of people wear like hats or they wear like a hair clip. Like I think that is channeling like the 2020s straight on through. I'm really about it. Like I think that it's a great little like braided sort of style. I don't know if it's Oscar de la Renta. If it is, I love it. I want to be a part of it. I think it's so chic. I feel like matching the, the, the earrings to the dress is also fantastic. Yeah, I think this could be a really, really great moment. It's just that glaring waist cinch is just what hurts it so badly. Next up is Lady Beyonce herself. Lady B, she looks gorge. I'm obsessed, I'm about it. Honestly, she's wearing Schiaparelli haute couture. It's obviously custom because I've looked through the collections and a look like this does not exist. I want to love this, I do. Uh, you know, to me, Schiaparelli is the utmost surreal icon of the world. She has, you know, laid such an amazing path for so many current and, you know, former designers. She's from the 1920s, 30s. She really sort of sculpted and created these crazy, over-the-top, ridiculous, surreal pieces and changed what we think of fashion. And so Daniel Roseberry, who is currently designing for the house, has sort of taken that you know, in a way. And I think this is not a great example of that. I think that if you're gonna wear Schiaparelli, I feel like Beyonce really should like channel Schiaparelli. Like she is, you know, when she shows up to stuff, you watch, you wanna see. She looks stunning, she looks beautiful. I think that the, you know, sort of empire bandage skirt isn't really great. You know, I've seen it a million times. I have, I really truly have. I also think that this sort of strap that is made out of this ridiculous sort of over the top, puffy, cloud-esque, you know, silvery, silky fabric. You know, it's very Daniel Roseberry, don't get me wrong, but it's whatever. Like we've seen it, it's interesting, you know, she looks good, but it also is a bit overwhelming. And I feel like there are better Daniel Roseberry looks to actually reference. I feel like there are different styles that she could have taken on. And cause to me, Beyonce didn't just, you know, have a stylist pull this look for her. Beyonce bought this, like she owns this dress. Like she bought Haute Couture cause she's an Haute Couture customer. So I'd like for her to actually like have done a little bit more Schiaparelli-ish. I wish she'd, you know, taken it a little bit further. She didn't even show up on the red carpet. I wish that she had sort of, you know, maybe done that ridiculous sort of pink gigantic gown. I wish it, she had sort of done a little, you know, ombre of crystals on the sleeves. Like I wish that she had kind of gone into the collection a little bit more and I expect better of her. I really, really do. I want her to keep on innovating because not many of the girls really do. And I feel like Beyonce would be the one to do it. Next up is Billy Porter and Alex Vanash. And now this look, I actually enjoy. Now I will explain why I enjoy it. And then I will explain my issues with it as well. Billy Porter, I think is brilliant. I think Billy Porter is a style icon. I think Billy Porter is blurring gender in front of her eyes every single time that he shows up anywhere. And I love him and I think he's fantastic. And I think he deserves the world. The other thing about this is, the Golden Globes last year, he wore this amazing Christian Siriano gown that was this big sort of crinoline skirt with a very short tuxedo jacket. So it was blurring what the ideas of gender should be for men because in reality, it was referencing menswear, classical menswear in a tuxedo jacket and shirt. But it was taking that and then saying, fuck you to gender norms and putting this gigantic crinoline skirt, which historically has always been about women and for women and designed for women and the perfect an ideal woman of, you know, the 1800s. So Billy like totally changed the game there. 
I think this season, what he's doing, and I hope that every year he goes to the Golden Globes and, you know, turns clothing and gender norms on its head. This year, he's taken that tuxedo aesthetic as well, that menswear style. And last year he did black, this year he's doing white. It's actually really crisp, clean, and classic. He's wearing a white jacket. He's not wearing a tie. Normally when you wear a tuxedo, you wear a tie, but instead he's wearing this beautiful little Tiffany's necklace. Tiffany gave him like a $400 million necklace and like, yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. It's a little, little diamond drop. It's like perfect. It sits there wonderfully. It's like gorgeous. And then we have the shirt. We have a little bit of a cummerbund. I don't love the cummerbund, but I understand that he's probably still trying to reference iconic and ideal menswear. And then we have a striking little pant and boot. The big moment for me though, is the feather train. Now trains, are always revolving around women. Women are always wearing these big, ridiculous, over-the-top trains. Think Rihanna, Priyanka Chopra, any of your favorite celebrities always wear trains and it's big and it's drama and it's like so chic, so feminine, so like womanly, so awe-inspiring. And here Billy Porter is wearing a train, a feather train in white. And I think this is again, Billy Porter taking the ideal woman of, I think more so today, less so, you know, that 1800 sort of crinoline vibe. He's more taking what we expect women to wear today on a red carpet and what that ideal of femininity is. And he's saying, well, fuck you. I'm going to mix it with menswear, iconic menswear and say, I can wear it. I look good. Don't be jealous. I really think actually it's a very, very strong look. I think he is blurring the gender lines again. I think he's doing something that I don't think this has ever been done before where a man is wearing a, you know, gigantic train and feathers on a red carpet and mixing it with menswear, like classic menswear. So it's really great. The one thing is I just don't think the fabrics are luxury enough. And that's my, that's my one issue with it. Like the cummerbund, it just looks a bit blah. The shirt is a little bit, ee, it just doesn't seem super clean luxury. And then the silk pants and jacket, like they look okay, but I'm not like, oh my God, dying about it. But that's my one, my one true issue is it doesn't look as luxury as it could be, but also I'm not saying that it airs on the side of costume either. I just feel like if we want to go even one step further, let's elevate it to luxury, luxury status. And then I would be on the floor dying, rolling. But I love Billy Porter and I'm so happy about that. Next up, Brad Pitt in Brioni. Boring, boring white man. Brad Pitt, I'm sorry, it's just boring. You're boring me, I'm bored, I'm tired. Like once upon a time in Hollywood, fell asleep. Not at the movie, but at this look. Mm -mm. No, no, not cute. Thank you, bye-bye. See you. And you take your friend Leo with you. Next up is Kate Blanchett wearing Mary Catrin Zoo. Now, I love parts of this. I do not love the crystal bra moment. I think that's super weird. I think it's super strange. I get that that's Mary Catrin Zoo. She is weird. She is strange. She is out there. But I don't think it works here. I do love the pleats. Now people are saying, Luke, you said white women can't wear yellow. And like, I do agree, but something about Kate's like literal porcelain pale skin sort of makes this light yellow work for me. I love the sleeves. I think they're fantastic. The pleating is gorgeous. It's ridiculous. It creates this, you know, very avant-garde sort of style of sleeve that we don't really see a lot. The skirt, I also like. I don't like it when it, doubles down. So the thing is, it's great if you have one skirt that's sort of long or one skirt that sort of is short or hits at the ankle, hits somewhere. But layering, you know, an ankle length skirt over a floor length skirt is weird. It's not cute. It doesn't make sense. Uh, there's no way I'm ever gonna say, oh my God, that's so stunning, unless it's truly stunning and it's not stunning. And I think it sort of goes to show that like, there can be elements of a piece of a garment that really work. And then the rest of it sort of falls apart and unravels. And you're sort of left saying, oh, we could have had something great, but now we can't. And so I'm disappointed in that. Next up is Charlize Theron in Dior. And now 
you'll see all the rest of the Dior looks and they are so unexplainably Maria Grazia Curie Dior. Like they just, it, it's so easy. You can spot the belts, you can spot the draping, you can spot the colors. Like it's so easy to tell what it is. It's so easy to say, oh, that's Maria Grazia's Dior, which, you know, for a brand, that's important. Here, Charlize Theron to me is not really a Maria Grazia Dior woman. To me, she is a Dior perfume woman. And I think that goes to show in this dress. This is not a Maria Grazia Curie color palette at all. Neon green with a black lace. It's just, it doesn't make sense to me in Maria Grazia isms. Obviously it has the Maria Grazia belt that short little skinny ribbon belt. I don't think it works. The pleating on top of this drape of this one shoulder is, ugh, the color is just awful. Like the, whoever color matched this needs to be fired from Dior. I mean, a lot of people need to be fired from Dior, but this one especially. I, you know, I would like to like the lace cage corset underneath, but it's covered in green shit fabric. So I can't do that. And then to have an off the shoulder sort of scarf train that you're like holding out like I'm meant to care. Like, no, Charlize, I'm not caring. I don't want to see it. I don't want anything to do with it. And you deserve better. She's Charlize Theron. She's Dior's face of makeup. She's always climbing up, you know, the, the gold, you know, fabric and reaching the top of that city. And she climbs out of the hole in the building and it's beautiful and gold and wonderful. Why are we getting the exorcist vomit green covering a black corseted bodice? Why? Who? Whose creative direction is this? Maria Grazia's, apparently. Next up is Cynthia Erivo and Tom Brown. Now this dress, again, I I'm caught up in it. The reason I'm caught up in it is because I like Tom Brown here. I, I don't really see a lot of Tom Brown gowns that are more demure. Obviously it's Tom Brown because it's interesting. You have the little white lapels that sort of create a wonderful neckline. That's stunning. I think that's wonderful. I love the beading of this dress. I think it's fucking phenomenal. I think that jet black right underneath is fantastic on Cynthia. But at a certain point in the dress, we lose that sort of starry night black with the white of the light shining off the beads and it falls into this very mute black with just little details of like flowers and whatever it is going on there. And to me, the only question that I have is why change the fabric? Why not just do a fully beaded gown? Like it's beautiful, it's so simple. You don't need to change it. I mean, I understand if it's saving costs and all that kind of stuff, but. Tom Brown just got bought for a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money by Xenia. So I don't believe that there's a lack of money and that's why the beading is not gonna be done all the way through. I just expect for that dress to have just been, bam, that beautiful jet black with the beading straight down, straight down. I don't need to see a different fabric. Like why are we always changing the fabrics? Nobody wants to see the changing of the fabrics. It just loses the actual stamina and effort and vigor of the look and it's just disappointing to see. Next up is Dakota Fanning and Christian Dior. I'm not obsessed. To me, this reads like super Gucci, super Gucci, like no problems here for me saying that. It's an empire waistline. You know, it goes right to under the bust. It has a puff sleeve. It has that sort of pulled tool. I do think the braided effect is cool, but again, I don't like it being so visible at the bust. I understand you have to change the fabric somehow, but figure out a way to change it without having to have some ridiculous braid there. I think if you'd had the braided, you know, detail just as a strap that, you know, pulled together this little puff sleeve, that could have been really cool. I think that could have been a great subtle detail and let the tool shine through. But in reality, when you create this stark seam, ribbon, braid, strap, belt, it ruins the look. It draws the person's eye straight to it. And so no longer am I looking at the beautiful light purpley pink tool with a white sort of chemise skirt underneath, I'm getting Oh God, my eyes are drawn right to that bumpy, whatever line is on her body. And I don't want that. I think that is so bleh, it's so boring. And I feel like fashion designers could find a way to innovate around that. And I don't know why they don't. So I'd like to know that. 
In reality, it could have been a great look, but it's really just throwing me off here. The rest of it, the colors, the puff sleeves, it's very pretty pretty. It's very Maria Grazia. It works in that way, but Maria Grazia, have your team innovate a little bit, please. Next up is Ellen DeGeneres in Celine, and you know, it's Ellen. I wasn't expecting anything crazy, but I think her pairing up with Celine is kind of perfect. I hope that in the future, if that continues and we see Ellen on the red carpet a lot more, that hopefully she starts to take a little bit more risks with Celine. Cause you know, it's always gonna be the 70s, 80s, 90s sort of style from Eddie Slamet. But you know, there are some little tidbits thrown into his collections, especially the men's looks. There are like interesting little styles that I'd like to see more and more and more of. So hopefully we can see that. The Swarovski crystal -y sort of, you know, studded jacket and pants. Yeah, I've seen it a million times. Anything special about it? Absolutely not. Bye, Ellen, get a boot. Next up, Glenn Close in Armani. Honestly, Glenn Close, I love this fabric. I love this beautiful velvet. I love the way the light reflects off of it. I think it's stunning. I think it's beautiful. I love the gorgeous little tailoring details, the little tailoring style of this jacket. And then guess what guys, it subtly falls into this sort of, you know, fuller skirt. The thing is, there's no belt, there's no braid, there's no ribbon, there's no sash. It just falls straight into it and my eye is not drawn to anything and it's not distracting me from the beautiful skirt matched with this beautiful tailored jacket top. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. I honestly feel like for older celebrities, older clientele, it could be so cool to really go back and back and back into these amazing styles that are reminiscent of the 50s and 60s of haute couture and I hope that this sort of styling continues. I hope that we really do see older women dressed in a way that's not just boring or blah, and I feel like that's happening, and I wanna see that more. Next up is Greta Gerwig in Proenza Schooler. Honestly disappointed. I don't really see a lot of Proenza Schooler on the red carpet, which is, in reality, to me, a shame. I feel like we could really get some beautiful, amazing, stunning looks. Now, the same with Ana de Armas, you have that sort of layover style. I like that it's created this, you know, very off the shoulder neckline, a, a tri strap, as we are saying now. I think it's a really great style. The thing is, something about the side seam that is that white sort of, you know, piping on the side, it just throws me off. I don't like that it seems to like open, almost like a zipper opening. I feel like that seems weird. And I feel like if you just had that white, simple little neckline and a beautiful fitted black dress underneath with no, you know, hems or haws or details and just using these technical sort of active fabrics that is very prone to schooler, it could have been a really simple but beautiful red carpet from Proenza who we don't really see a lot of moments like that. So I want that. I don't want all the hems and haws and added and batted. Like, no, I, I just want simple and chic and elegant from Puenza because a lot of the times they just do too much and it ruins it. They need to learn how to edit. And this is a perfect example. Editing is helpful. But I will say, I do hope to see a lot more of them on the red carpets this award season. Next up is Gwyneth Paltrow in this Fendi moment. And like, this is one of the moments that took the night. Like there's a lot of bad, obviously, but this is superb. I love this. People are saying this is awful. Bitch, you're lost in the sauce. I don't know what you're talking about. Get out of my face. Bye-bye. This sheer tool moment is superb. Gw Gwyneth Paltrow really can like, you know, do some wrong, but here she's taking a chance. She's fully showing it off to the girls and a lot of them really could never. I love this, you know, sort of layered tool with the smocking creating these stripes. I love the full little sleeves. They're big, they're baggy. And the way that that tool just sort of falls off creates its own detailing. The way it drapes creates its own detail, which in reality means you don't have to embroider it. You don't have to do anything to it. It, you know, sort of does it itself. And I think that's so important. And that's what I love about this Fendi look is that it's, it's quite simple. It seems like it's very avant-garde and ridiculous and over the top, but in reality, it's really just tool. And the Fendi team just let the tool do what it wanted to do and do what it naturally does. And I think that's so perfect. That pulling of the fabric creates these beautiful lines and styles that are so beautiful and simple and detailious. I even like love the smogging, the brown underwear, like 
She didn't try to do white. She didn't try to do black. It was brown. It matches. It's perfect. It's wonderful. And honestly, I love the bra. I love the smocking on the bra. I, I think it's wonderful. And I even love that in reality, this dress doesn't cinch her waist, but that one piece of like seam creates this, you know, drawing of the eye to the waist. And you're like, oh my God, she looks stunning. She looks beautiful. Like this is fashion. This is simple. This is clean and elegant. And in reality to me, this is a beautiful, elegant, classy piece, but it's not boring. It's not tired. It's not already done. It's adventurous, but somehow it keeps this elegance about it that you're not saying, oh, well, she's a, uh, you know, having her ass out and all that kind of stuff. Like, but you can see her body. And so there is a way to show off your body and be elegant. And there's also a way to show off your body and not be elegant. And that's fine too. But you know, if anybody's saying like, this is too much, this is ridiculous, this is so ugly. Like, no, it's not. It's beautiful. It's simple. It's allowing the fashion and the fabric and the textile to do all of the work. And that's what we need to get more into. We need to stop with the embroideries and the embellishments. Like you're doing too much. It's not cute, it's not working, it's not interesting. This is simple yet effective. If there's ever been a simple yet effective look. Next up is Dame Helen Murin. She's wearing Dior. I'm not a big asymmetry fan. So like the one swag with the other swag, it's just a bit weird. And then the other thing is like, listen, if you're doing asymmetry, then like find a piece of jewelry that's asymmetrical. You know what I mean? To me, like the necklace looks weird because it's being overlapped on one side, but there's so much skin here. So like, can we find like an asymmetrical jewelry to, to work here? I feel like that's a way to combat asymmetry and to work with it is to also be asymmetrical because you can't be symmetrical with asymmetry. It's weird, it doesn't make any sense. Obviously you have your little Dior belt. It's a nice red. I think, I think she looks nice. You know what I mean? I'm not expecting her to come out in some crazy avant-garde ridiculous over the top look. I think she looks nice. I think it's very, Maria Grazia Dior. Do I wish that it was symmetrical? Absolutely. And if it's not gonna be symmetrical, let's work on the jewelry so that I feel a little bit better about it. That's how I'm feeling. Next up, Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet. Now let's talk about Jason Momoa first. I love this velvet jacket. I don't know if he's wearing Fendi, but the last time that I checked, he wore Fendi when Lisa Bonet wore Fendi. So like, I'm assuming that he's wearing it, but I'm not super positive on it. I wish the pants match. Like, why can't we just have a full velvet suit? Jason Momoa, wear a boot, please, for me. For me, for me, I'm not asking much, just wear a boot. Wear a boot that matches, you know, your little velvet blazer and then get a pair of pants that also match your little velvet blazer and it'd be so hot and wonderful. But yeah, I, I love the velvet on top, but then when it falls into like boring menswear pant, I'm just like, oh, we could have had something, but now we can't. And then there's Lisa Bonet who's wearing Fendi. And I love this dress. It's a little bit sheer. It has this very like foliage print. Sylvia Venturini Fendi, who is currently designing the collections from what I know, is actually like taking her own aesthetics, like her love of florals and sort of channeling it into Fendi, which I think is great. Like, you know what? Do something that is close to you. I love the flowers on it and I love the little foliage. I think it's gorgeous. Normally people are like meandering vines and blah, blah, blah. This is like an embroidered, beautiful, you know, set of flowers with leaves just sort of working. The thing is, I don't love the hem. I, I get that that is a reference back to that Fendi collection, the Haute Couture collection, but I just don't think it really works. I just wish it had sort of fallen and been full in this sort of light green, you know, uh, sheer fabric. I, ju I just think that would have been a better way to go about ending off this dress. But in reality, I like it. She looks good. Next up is Jennifer Aniston wearing Dior. We haven't seen Jennifer Aniston in a hot second on a red carpet, I feel. So to see her in Dior is different. The thing is, it's a different style. From Maria Grazia, I feel like I don't really see much of it in reality from her. This sort of like, you know, full moment. There's no caging. There's no tool. It's just sort of a matte fabric. And I just feel like it's weird. Why is there a belt there? I feel like there's no need for the belt. It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't need to be there. The dress just fits her well. So why put a belt? It just looks strange. The neckline, I'm not obsessed with the flappy flabby. It looks like a cauliflower made out of black like on her body and it's just not that cute, but it's Dior. So Enjoy it. Next up was probably one of the biggest uh, moments of the night. I didn't say the best, I just said the biggest. And it was JLo in this Valentino, from what I 
no is it's an haute couture and it was shown in china it was shown in that china valentino collection yeah like what everybody was saying where she looks like ripped up gift wrapping like yes she looks like that and the thing is it's just kind of like giving me you know Christmas wrapping paper sitting in landfill vibes. That's just what I'm getting. I'm just like, oh, climate change. Oh, you know what? She's an activist now. She's like trying to show us this is what's happening to the world. But in reality, I would love for that to be what JLo was thinking, but obviously her and her team don't think they're that smart. I don't think that they actually could like intelligently pull that off. Unfortunately, she's two Silas. She doesn't have, she doesn't just have one. She's two. So two people looked at this look and said, okay this works there were so many better looks from that valentino collection too like why couldn't we get a full swarovski crystal jennifer lopez like face moment like why couldn't she be covered in silver glitter paint why can't that happen why can't she be different why can't she be avant-garde we see jennifer lopez all the time you know what i see your thighs i see your face i get i know what she looks like so i'd like to see something a little bit different a little a little bit subversive a little bit you know not just pretty, pretty J-Lo. Just because you wear a dress doesn't mean that you're gonna channel that energy of difference, of interest, of anything like that. In reality, she just looks like climate change glaring at us. The other thing is her stylist would post saying, oh, this is throwbacks to J-Lo, throwbacks to J-Lo at the Golden Globes this year, throwbacks to J-Lo at the Golden Globes that year. I don't wanna see that. I wanna see you do something new. Stop posting on Instagram, that's not your job. Your job is not to post on Instagram old pics of J-Lo. Your job is to make J-Lo look good. So why don't you work on that? Why don't you do that? Why don't you let her pay you for that? These people, they need to figure it out because yikes. Next up is Joey King, and I'm feeling much better about this whole thing. I just went from like J-Lo drag, dragging J-Lo, and now Joey King and Iris Van Herpen is really, it's making me happy. When I saw this look, I just thought she looked gorgeous. I thought I was gonna see a lot of Iris Van Herpen tonight, and I'm happy that I didn't. I, I, I love this on her. I think this is stunning. I think this is fabulous. I think it fits her beautifully. I love this little turtle neck with the cutouts on the sleeves, with the lines. You know, it, it's different, it's subversive, it's beautiful. And I feel like a lot of the time people think Iris Van Herpen is weird. I feel like people think, oh, she's crazy, she's ridiculous, she's over the top. But somehow, this is probably the most stunning look of the night, in my opinion. Like, it's fashion, it's design, it's art, it fits her. It also fits her. So, like, it's not just fashion, not uh, over the top, ridiculous, avant-garde. Like, it fits her beautifully. She looks stunning in it. She looks poised. She looks classic. She looks elegant. I'm waiting for her to sit down for a portrait. Like this could hang in the mat, this image. Like it's beautiful. She looks stunning. And I feel like she really is starting to channel this sort of fashion ideal of not being boring and disinteresting. She's actually taking the time and having her stylist take the time to really put in the effort to make something that matters. Nowadays with, you know, the wildfires in Australia burning and climate change around us, it's so boring to see shitty dresses that don't mean anything. I don't want to see that. Listen, save the airfare, save the, you know, dyes that are, you know, killing people in Pakistan and Bangladesh and in India. Like save all that junk, the fossil fuels and all of that. Save that because I don't wanna see it. Why are you killing my planet for something that I've already seen a million times and is, that is not interesting? This, to me, is art. It's artistic, it's different, it's design, it's channeling something, and I'd rather see something interesting. I'd rather see less but more interesting things than just a bunch of shit that I've already seen that doesn't really mean anything to anybody. And to me, Joey King is channeling that. She's channeling it perfectly. This dress is stunning, it's beautiful, it's Iris Van Herpen. She wins, she just wins the night. And I'll say, not every Irish Van Herpen dress is a winner, but Joey King hit it out of the ballpark. Hit it, whacked it, punched it, kicked it. She just, she did it. Next up is Josh O'Connor wearing Loewe. And I eliminated Ansel Elgort and Tom Ford because I was like, you know what? You don't even deserve this. Take your shitty velvet and your little loafers, slippers out of my face. Josh O'Connor, it's stunning. It's different. It sort of is referencing back to like a different menswear period. I don't know the exact dates. Apologies. But I love this little silky ribbon tie. I think that's 100% what I'm about. I love the little Loewe pin. Daddy. Daddy has taste. Daddy knows what he's doing. Daddy is pulling from a designer who gets it. Jonathan Anderson, I love you. And then I love how long this blazer is. I feel like the blazer is quite sharp. It's different. It, it, 
you know, the pants I'm not obsessed with, but it's giving me sort of like Eaton, Cambridge, Oxford vibes. And considering he was on The Crown, like that's what I want. I want him to channel his character a little bit. I feel like people should channel their characters of what they played every single press tour, every single award season. What would your character wear? How are you going to represent your movie through your clothing choices? Like that's interesting, that's cool. Why are we not doing that? And I feel like Josh O'Connor is kind of giving me Prince Charles vibes here. And I'm like, oh, I'm still watching The Crown. It's just now at the Golden Globes. And I love that. Next up is Caitlyn Dever and she is wearing Valentino. And I believe she's also wearing Valentino from the same, you know, China collection that JLo was wearing. I like this. It's so, you know, ridiculous. It's Valentino. Pierre Paolo loves color. He loves ridiculous. He loves florals. He loves abstraction. So this is a different sort of floral style. A lot of the times it's just boring, it's sad, it's you've already seen it a million times, but this is like art pop, it's surreal, it sort of has this modern take, the colors are bright, it's kind of like giving me Dr. Seuss vibes. And then also, like, note, there are two little flowers that have red little circles right at the boobs, and honestly, like, if that's not meant to represent nipples, I don't know what it is, and that's why I'm like, Pier Paolo, you're so smart, you're so stunning, you're so interesting. And the other thing is, these Valentino gowns are very easily overwhelming. They could really overwhelm just about anybody and Caitlyn Dever pulls it off. And I feel like that's a feat because you look at JLo and you're like, oh, that bow is eating you. Here, she's picked a choice that is different. It's avant-garde. It's a little bit crazy, a little bit kooky, but it's not devouring her. She's wearing the dress and it's not wearing her. And I think that's where it's important. It's a full big ass gown with interesting sleeves and a crazy print and style and colorway. And you know, her perfect little cheeks sort of play into that pale pink that's going on. And I just think it's smart. I think she's done a great job. Her styling team, whoever it is. Yeah, I'm about it. Thank you. Next up is Kerry Washington wearing Altazara. No, just no, absolutely not. I'm so sorry, Kerry Washington. Could Joseph Altazara not get two of the same fabrics? He couldn't do the, the skirt in the same fabric as the black blazer? Like I'm lost and I'm, I'm, I'm confused as to why that couldn't happen. If that had happened, I would have been about this because it would have been all, you know, superb. It would have had these two elements, this weird sort of like crystal, you know, harness with a beautiful black jacket and beautiful skirt. But no, I have to get a silky satin skirt that sort of just throws me off the whole look. It just totally changes the whole vibe of the look. And no, I don't want that. I love the idea of it, but the execution is very, very, very poor. Next up is Leonardo DiCaprio in Armani. Whatever, it's fine, it's boring, it's tired. You know, I've seen it a million times. He's a white man in a suit. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. Next up is Lucy Boynton in Louis Vuitton, and no, Nicola Gasquet, why? Like, why? Why do you make such weird shit that nobody wants? Nobody ever asked for this silver popcorn trash bag with ugly, like, floral cutouts. It's just bleh, and like, the people are like, Lucy Boynton, so great, like, blah, blah, blah. but like, where are the fashion choices that are great? Because I've yet to see any. There's literally never been a look that's been interesting to me from her. And I'm tired of like having to talk about her and having to be like, it's shit, it's boring, it's ugly, it's trash. Cause that's what that is. She looks like, I don't even know, like tinfoil and not even cute tinfoil. Cause sometimes you can make tinfoil cute, but not her. Next up is Margaret Qualley in Chanel from what I believe. And I only believe that because there's that camellia right in the center and that's a Chanel signature. Also, it's just giving me very like demure Virginie Viard Chanel vibes. In reality, I'm not gonna totally crucify Margaret Qualley because I feel like she's given us some pretty stellar moments so far. And although this is a bit boring, a bit, you know, blah, it does, it's not even, you know, superb, even though it's simple. I'm kind of going to let it pass because I feel like we've seen good enough stuff from her in the past, but I expect her style team to really pick it up. Like get back to where you were because this is blah, boring, whatever. Like great at Chanel, but also like, yeah, great. It's Chanel. Anything else? No, it's boring. It's a simple black dress. Like, there's just nothing really superb, stunning about it. And I don't think it does her any justice. Next up is another Chanel girl, Margot Robbie. This is again from another Virginie Viard collection. And like, no, I don't wanna see this like weird print. It's so strange. And if you're gonna do this weird, you know, sequin, silver, shiny, metallic-y print, 
just like do the full dress in it. Like do something with it. But why is there, you know, this like waistband in the same fabric and creating this puff for the bodice. And then you have a full white skirt that like makes no sense. Like wh where is the full white skirt coming into this at all? Like why? I don't understand what the look is, what it's meant to be, what it's meant to do. Cause it's not, it's not making me say, oh wow, that print is so interesting. I'm saying, ooh. Ooh, ooh. And then the white skirt doesn't do her any justice. It's like a whatever white skirt. It's just blah, blah, Margot Robbie, blah. Next up is Michelle Williams, Louis Vuitton. I'm gonna kill myself. I hate this so much. This is the most ugly thing in the entire world. Like Nicola Gasquier, why? Why are you making custom red carpet looks when you're not good at it? We already all established this. You're not good at it. It's, it doesn't work for you. And yet here we are with another ugly ass one that nobody asked for. Like. You did a whole collection about the Art Nouveau mixing with the 70s and the 60s, like channel that, channel something like that. But this asymmetrical, you know, ties with a blue flower strap, like where is any of this making sense to you and your team? I need to know, like the peach doesn't look good on her. Uh, the, the the pulling and the, the stretching of the fabric with the ribbons, it just looks strange and weird. She doesn't look happy at all. You can tell she's not happy. All, the girls that look good, they, they're happy. They're content. They know they look good. Michelle Williams, she's saying, fuck my life. Why am I here? Next up is Naomi Watts in Armani. And now I want to like this look. I love the straps. I think they're beautiful. I think it's stunning. I think it's a really, really smart look. And I feel like it's a different way of doing straps that we don't really see a lot. Then you ruin it with the silver fabric underneath. Like why couldn't we have just had a full dress in that black with the studs? Why? Like, why did we have to change and do this ugly gray silver fabric that doesn't do her any justice? In the black, it would have been so slimming, so fitting, so beautiful. It would have been gorgeous. And you could have done more detailing with these crosses and the X's, but no, we just have to do a simple fucking wrap around silver gray, like piece of fabric around her body. And I'm just bored of it. I'm just bored of it bored of it. Next up is Nick Jonas and Prada, and I can't really find a photo of him by himself, unfortunately, but he's wearing this little silky suit we love. He's wearing a nice little boot. You know, they're a bit ugly, but they're Prada, so it's on brand, it makes sense. But then he came out, and that man came out in a Prada triangle logo bolo tie. Man won the night, he won it. Like he is the best dressed man of the night. It's Nick Jonas, I'm not even gonna wait till the end of the video. Like that is it, that is it, that is it. That's what I want from men. Interesting, different, crazy, ridiculous. Little subtle details actually, actually mean something. And we love it. Thank you, Nick Jonas. Next up is Nicole Kidman in Versace. Yeah, it's a bit boring for Nicole Kidman. I, 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 you know, bleh, bleh. It seems like that fold over neckline is really a thing. It's, it's gonna be trending, I guess. But it's, you know, I've seen it a million times. This red with the slit. She's not even like making the slit happen. Like, why is the slit there then? Like, if the slit isn't gonna be slitted and you're not gonna put your leg through the slit, what's the point? Just unslit it, you know? Sew it up. It, it's just, Blit. It's, it's a red dress, it's a red gown. Anything interesting? No. Is it a waste of my time? Absolutely. Is it helping to kill the earth? 100%. Next up is Olivia Coleman in Amelia Wickstead. <sighs> What's the point? It's just not interesting. Like I wanna like the sleeves, but I, they're fine, I guess. But then again, you have this gigantic seam right at the empire. Like it's an empire skirt, but it's so blatantly an empire skirt. Like why can't it just be a subtle little detail? It looks like it has a mouth. It looks like her boobs are the eyes and the puckering of the fabric is that is a mouth. And that's what I'm getting. It's, it reminds me of like my own stomach. It's like my nipples are here and then my stomach, if I go like that, it'll, you know, make a noise. I can give it a voice and that's what that's giving me up there. It's just not cute, Olivia Coleman. You're the queen. You're the queen. Reference the queen. Please, please, please. Wear like a 60s ensemble. Like reference your character. It's not that hard. If you don't have anything interesting to do, if you don't have any interesting ideas or aesthetics and your stylist sucks, just tell your stylist, go through the, the outfits of the crown and reference that. Like make something amazing, stunning, cool, gorgeous like that. But no, we got 
whatever discombobulated shit that is. Next up is Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Ralph and Russo. And will I say like, it's an okay suit if you're going to like a brunch? Yeah, sure. But on a red carpet, it's just a bit been there, done that, have the t-shirt. Like, why did we have to waste that beautiful Balenciaga crinoline gown on a Vogue image when we could have had it on a red carpet, Phoebe Waller-Bridge? Like, why don't we do that? Why is that not happening? Why are we getting boring plaid suit and black and, you know, beading and a asymmetrical ribbon on the shoulder. Like, why is that necessary, Ralph and Russo? Like, who asked for that? Nobody, nobody asked for that. Nobody wants that. No, nobody wants it. I expect better from Phoebe Waller-Bridge and her team. Cause now that I've seen that Balenciaga image, I'm like, wait, that's all I'm gonna get now? This is all I'm gonna get? Okay, sure. Next up is Portia de Rossi and Celine. And like, honestly, it's so Eddie. It's like, so, so Eddie, the little skinny tie, the little, you know, loose kind of fast, lazy knot. I feel like it could have fit her a little bit better. Like the pants just look a little bit strange to me personally, just like the way they hit at the, at the ankle. Maybe that's just the way that she's putting her foot out. But you know, I love that tie with the white shirt. It just reads so Celine to me now that I know it's Celine. Next is Priyanka Chopra and Christina Ottaviano. Honestly, Prada, you're dressing Nick Jonas. You couldn't have dressed Priyanka Chopra too? That's my issue. They were like, they came together. Like they were taking photos together. Why couldn't they just, you know, both wear Prada? I feel like that could have been cool. I'm not trying to say I want Priyanka Chopra to look bad. Cause like, Sometimes that product custom is a bit blah, but if you're having like a Sarah Paulson green fringe plastic moment and like actually pulling from the collection and delivering something interesting and cool, then a product collection isn't really an issue. A product collection actually can be such a benefit to you, but instead the product team doesn't want to do that and they want to let her wear this pink monstrosity of a dress. Like it's a pink bandage dress with a low cut scoopy neckline. And it's just blah, okay, we get it. They can drape fabric. Anything else? No? Okay, moving on. Thanks for wasting my time. Next up is Renee Zellweger in Armani. And I think this is great. I think this is really simple. I think it's very, very nice. I love that one little seam of the crystals cutting through. It, it, it kind of pulls the slit together. It's almost like, a half open zipper. And I like that. You don't have to go crazy. I love the shape of this neckline, the way it's curved like that and sort of plays into the line. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's stunning. They always said Versace dressed the mistress of the man and Armani dressed the wife. The wife doesn't have to be not sexy. The wife can be chic, elegant, refined, wonderful. And that doesn't have to be a bad thing. And I think that's the thing about Armani that I love is that, yeah, like when it's done correctly, when it's done beautifully, it works, it's happening, it, it's a moment and it doesn't have to be crazy ridiculous in your face. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. Next up is Reese Witherspoon and Roland Moret. Reese, you deserve better. This is so ugly. Like what is bunching up at, at, your, at your bodice? Like why are you having this weird like shark fin white piece of fabric that's like scrunched and crunched all up on your body? Like. Just wear a simple, beautiful, interesting neckline and we'll have a moment. Like, I don't need that, that. I just need a beautifully crafted piece of fabric that goes around and does something a little bit interesting. Maybe we have a little tri strap. Maybe we have a little deep plunging neckline. Maybe we have a little curved neckline, a little bit of sweetheart. But whatever that cloud weird moment is, I don't want to see it. I'm good. I, I don't need that. Thank you. Next up is Rooney Mara, Givenchy. It's a bit blah. I'm pretty positive that the look, this actual Givenchy look, it has a skirt that is actually in the same lace as the one that's against her torso, uh, the bodice, it matches. Cause to me, I love the lace on the bodice. I think it's gorgeous, I think it's stunning. And then I like the skirt. I like that it, it sort of peplums out. It's a little bit, you know, radical. And then I think if you'd had the lace fabric that also was sheer, like the bodice, it could have worked, but having it fully black, that opaque black, it sort of ruins it. I feel like having the sheer would have maybe been a little bit more interesting and having her actually in movement in an interesting you know, way, showing that the fabric moves, would have been really cool and interesting and wonderful. And that didn't happen, unfortunately. Next up is Selma Hayek and Gucci. And honestly, she's married to Francois Pinot, the man that owns Kering, which means the man that owns Gucci, Saint Laurent, Bottega Veneta, Alexander McQueen, like so many brands. And 
this is what we get. And let me just say, Selma Hayek always looks like shit. I'm so sorry, Selma Hayek. I love you personally, but like, she always looks a hot goddamn mess. And it's so weird, because I feel like if Bernard Arnault's wife was running around on red carpets, they'd make sure that that woman was dressed impeccably, because you know, they have Dior, Louis Vuitton, you know, so many great brands. But why is it that this woman is wearing this ugly Gucci, Jacardi floral bodice with a G, a little diamond G, and this ugly ass white slitted skirt. Like it doesn't make any logical sense. Alessandra Michele and your custom team, what are you doing? What's happening? I don't understand. I'm lost in the sauce. And the woman has more money than Carter got liver pills. Like why can't she buy something interesting? Why? Uh, it's so, ooh, yikes, gross. Sierra Sharonin next up, Celine. Ugh. Saoirse Ronan's going for like best actress, I'm pretty positive, for Little Women. Mmm, not that. Not, not that at all. Like that slit, horrendous. The neckline, ugh. And then the straps, yeah. Like, Eddie, listen, sweetie, honey, darling. If you're gonna make a really simple dress like that, make sure it looks fucking fantastic. Not sloppy, doesn't fit, falling all over the place. Yikes, medoodles. Like, that's yikes, medoodles. I don't know who yikes, medoodles is, but it looks yikes, medoodles. And I expect better. So, so much better from Celine, especially if you're gonna be so simple and chic in 80s, 90s revival. Better. I expect much better. Scarlett Johansson and Vera Wang. Blech, blech, who cares? What's the point? It's it's a red dress. And the worst part is, see, they, they couldn't even get the dress to fit her so well because you can see that little sheer fabric that just, you know, it ruins it for me. It ruins the fantasy. To me, if they'd actually like, you know, fit it to her so that it was perfectly fitted, it would be, you know, much better at least. But now that I can see through the the, the sort of fantasy and see through the trickery Ugh. and then also that gown is just not flattering the big bows in the back whatever that is doesn't help and then it's just like frumpy flumpy dumpy all the way down yeah you know what she's a tree that's she's dressed well for a tree i guess shailene woodley next up in bema um as soon as i saw it i knew it was bema yeah it's not great it, it's not you know, so totally awful, disgusting. Oh my God, I'm gonna throw up, you know, in a trash bucket next to me, but it's not good. It's a circle orb holding the straps up with, a, you know, I wanna say strapless, but it's not really strapless with, you know, a quite straight across neckline and the slit and the shoes like reference back. You know what, listen. At least it's referential. At least it, it, it works well together. A lot of people, if they're gonna wear something like this, they do some weird ass shoe. But here, you know, it's a weird ass shoe, but at least it correlates back to the look. Yeah, no. At least she's trying, I guess. Next up is Sophia Carson and John Battista Valli. And like, listen, I think we're leaving big, ridiculous, over the top cake topper tool in 2019. She's, she's back there. Leave her there. Don't bring her back out again. We don't need to see her. John Batista Valley can go too, because that's what she's wearing. It's like a feather little bandeau top with a big poofy cupcake skirt. And like, okay, anything else interesting to say? Except you don't really have a style of your own and you're not trying to carve one out for yourself, no? Oh, okay, cool. Stop wasting my fucking time. Thanks. Next up, Sofia Vergara and Dolce & Gabbana. Girl should have just went naked. Why, why, why are you wearing Dolce & Gabbana? Like any celebrity that wears Dolce & Gabbana to me is just an idiot. Like first things first, there's no way you don't know about the Dolce & Gabbana scandal. Second thing second, you, there's no way your stylist doesn't know that there's a Dolce & Gabbana scandal. And also like you eroded the great wall of Dolce & Gabbana. You jumped over, you jumped over to the other side. You jumped over to the side where like these fucking racist assholes have never apologized for the things they've said. They never tried to make better anything that they've said except put out apologies and keep on trucking along. No, you decided to go that way for that dress. I'd understand maybe if it was a beautiful, wonderful, over the top, amazing dress, but it's not. It's a fucking shitty bandage gown with silver fucking beading all over it. Is that interesting? Was that worth making everybody hate you now? No, it wasn't. I really don't think it was, but you made your grave, Sophia. 
lie in it. Next up is Taylor Swift and Etro. And now Etro is very into Prince. That's like their vibe, that's their aesthetic. So I wouldn't expect a really great sort of structurally sound gown. And I was right. There's nothing interesting, wonderful. Even the print, it's like Taylor Swift's style team, whoever it is, I don't know if they exist. Maybe she just picks everything out herself like Blake Lively because she thinks she's a stylist. Hopefully she doesn't. They're just doing her dirty. Like she doesn't have anything to say with her clothing. And that's, the, that's my issue with hers. She always is talking about situations, moments, injustices, things that are going on in the world. And I feel like her clothing never reflects that. And I'd like to know why. Like why can't she ever have something that actually says something? Like why why can't you ever wear a dress or a pantsuit or a skirt or a top that says something that has meaning and that is not a slogan t-shirt but you know is structurally sound is you know sustainable it, like any of these that like it doesn't do anything it doesn't mean anything it doesn't have any like ulterior motives and i don't need to see a gigantic flower yellow and blue gown that doesn't mean anything it's just a waste of everybody's time it just is it's a waste of fabric it's a waste of dye it's a waste of manpower it's a waste of energy to have to care or talk or even look at this and i'm tired of that being fashion because it's not fashion next up is tiffany haddish and gailia lahav don't know it but i think it's a bridal design house of some sort i'm not interested in this it's a pink dress it's draped awfully like the the, the cups the cups are different they just look different. They don't look symmetrical and they're meant to look symmetrical, which is even worse than being asymmetrical is trying to look symmetrical and then it doesn't look symmetrical. So that's bad. Secondly, the gigantic like sarong dip in the front, so weird. I will say it loses all shape down the front, but it does help to create shape on the sides or along the waist. So I guess that's interesting, but they need to figure out a way to make it so that it doesn't just fall fully flat down and it's like, oh, you know, fabric in the wind, fabric in the wind, because that's what I'm getting. That, like, it just looks messy, it looks weird. So they gotta figure that out. Tiffany Haddish, I just feel like, deserves so much better than what she's ever gotten, and I would like for this all to change, please, immediately. Next up is Winnie Carlo in Laquan Smith, and I love Laquan Smith, but I just think this is blah. I think it's boring, I think it's sad. I feel like Laquan, he has a model. He had Winnie Harlow wearing his clothes. Like, why are we not seeing something stunning, wonderful, ridiculous, over the top, crazy on a red carpet. I wanna see that from him, not, you know, fringe on a 90s, you know, little piece of sheath dress. That's boring, that's done, it's a million times over. Laquan Smith, I love you, I know you have something to say, say it through the clothing on the red carpet. This is like, you know, one of the only times I've ever seen really Laquan Smith on a red carpet, except for that Normani look. And I take back what I said about that anaconda, little skirt. It was cute. It worked about it. I changed my mind after somebody told me what it was and I, you know, looked at other photos. But this, mm -mm. do better, Laquan, please. Next up, Zoe Kravitz. I want to like this. I like the top. I really do. I think that little polka dot could have been great if it was like a beautiful, you know, full all the way through dress. But then we have a sash, a ribbon sash. God knows why. And then we have from small little crazy, ridiculous, overdone polka dots that are all over the place and like scattered to really static, very like planned out gigantic polka dots. And we invert the colors. So we go from white on black to black on white. And it's just weird. It doesn't make any sense. It's Saint Laurent. Like I've never seen anything like this from Saint Laurent before. So I don't know, is Anthony Vaccarello like running out of ideas? Cause that's what that looks like. It just is weird. It doesn't make any sense. It's not flattering on her. It's not like an interesting color story. It's not an interesting pattern story. I think if we had just had that top, you know, all the way down, fully through, without the sash, without the skirt, without the changing of the pattern, could have been really nice and simple and cute. But no, we have to try to be extra. Why do we always have to try to be extra when we're not actually good at being extra? I don't understand. And finally, we have Zoe Dutch. She's wearing Fendi. I love this. I think this is beautiful. I think it's simple. That little plunging neckline is great. And the thing is, I can see the little, you know, sheer fabric that's holding it together. I can see that. But, you know, when I back up a little bit, I can't really see it. It looks like the shadow of her cleavage is also where that shadow of, you know, the belly, the, 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 the torso is. 
I love the sleeves. I think they're phenomenal. I think this color is gorgeous. I love the sharp shoulders. And I love that it looks like a jumpsuit. I don't know if it is a jumpsuit. You know, with that line straight down the middle, you can imagine it is. But somehow, I also feel like it could be a dress. I'm not super duper sure, but I love it. I think it's simple. I think it's flattering. I think it's beautiful. I love the nice little blue jewelry. I think it works perfectly with the plunging neckline. It's done. So that is the end of the video. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. I wanna know all of your thoughts on all the looks from the Golden Globes. I thought it was, you know, okay. I think there were some really, really good solid looks. I think there was also a lot that was a little bit boring, but I feel like it's the beginning of the award season. So hopefully everybody starts to churn out, you know, some pretty stellar, cool looks in the future. Hopefully, you know, celebrities and stylists work with designers to create things that are going to mean something. That's what I want in 2020. Have the clothing mean something, not just a pretty, pretty dress that we've already seen a million times. Please and thank you. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one and TTYL.